First time I went to Paris, I was 20 years old and I did it all wrong and I didn't like it. I stayed outside the city center. I didn't have a good plan for sightseeing. I went to like touristy restaurants that weren't very good. And I went in August and was disappointed that things were closed, but. We're gonna fix that for you and your trip to Paris. We're gonna do our best to make this video super simple, understandable, practical. So your first trip to Paris or maybe your third trip to Paris is the best it can possibly be. Yes. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Erica. And we're your guides abroad. We lived in England for six years and we love making frequent trips to Paris. We'd hop on the Eurostar, go down to Paris for a long weekend. So we have a little bit more experience on Paris. Yeah. We're still learning, especially pronunciation. Wow, French is hard. We didn't study in school, so we do our best mm -hmm. to say the words. Please don't rip us in the comments too badly. Or but you it's can. okay. It's, it's fine. okay. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. But we had this video broken down into three sections. First, Things to know before you go, mm -hmm. once you arrive, and we end with some unique fun things to do so you don't get stuck out of those touristy places that we say. Yeah. Oh, and we're starting off with our main takeaways. If you've watched nothing else in this video, here's some main takeaways for your trip to Paris. Really helpful stuff. One, Paris is overwhelming. It feels that way to us. There's so many cool things to do around the yeah. city. So we recommend picking your must-do attractions. Yeah. Your must-visit things. Make sure you make time to those and maybe even book those ahead. Yeah. Number two, how long to stay? The internet says five days. Yeah. They're pretty passionate about that. We say go as much as you can, yeah. as long as you can. We like three to four days. We can see a lot and then we just plan on going back. If you really love sightseeing and really love cities, then yeah, you're going to need probably five plus days yeah. easily. This was my big lesson learned after my first visit to Paris when I was backpacking in my 20s. I mean, Parisians get a bad rap for being rude. They're really not. If yeah. you walk up and say bonjour and like, you know, look at them when you greet them, then they'll be a lot friendlier to you. Yeah. Americans usually kind of go up and just start talking to them, but you have to like acknowledge their humanity. So say bonjour, this bonjour goes, madame, bonjour monsieur. This goes for wherever you travel it or, is. or even at home. It really is, yeah. yeah. And this one's a pitch. Download our one day itinerary for Paris. It's a great walking tour of the city, right in central Paris. At least you'll have one day planned perfectly for your trip. Click down below to download. Welcome to the know before you go section. Can't help but talk about the Olympics. It's the biggest thing going on in Paris this summer. You can say Europe, right? Yeah. It is going on from July 26th to August 11th. And then the Paralympics follow the main Olympics. Yeah. So with the European city, what we noticed for London, when we lived in London, is the Olympics were nice because it like cleaned up the city. Sure did. Like we appreciate the infrastructure changes for years afterwards. So more trash cans and they clean it. And that's what they're doing in Paris right now. It's like the city's getting a big overhaul for it. I don't know if you're going during the Olympics. This video is not about that because it's going to be very busy. and It's going to be very different than a regular trip to Paris. But kind of like things to acknowledge before you go. First of all, make sure you, you book that hotel early. Yeah. Just because Paris is going to be busy all summer long. So a big thing to do is book that hotel. We'll go over that in more detail later. Here are some cool things about the Paris Olympics. It is number one is that the opening ceremonies is on the Seine River. So they're doing it as boats go down the Seine River. So crazy. And number two, everyone's talking about breakdancing. That can be found at Place de la Concorde, which is a popular place to visit, but that's where breakdancing is gonna be. Pretty sweet. Yeah. So that's where breakdancing will premiere in Paris there at the go. Olympics. Yeah. Like that's its premiere. I it's mean, that's time. so cool. It's cool. <laughs> All right, so a trip to Paris is not cheap. And that is something that you need to know before you go so that you have your expectations set. I mean, it can be as cheap as you want it to be, right? You when can't we were do 20, hostels and boat, yeah, yeah. We were, we definitely did it on the cheap, but it can also be very expensive. We have a full article on our website breaking down the cost. So you can use that to kind of estimate what kind of trip you want to have. So a five day trip in May to Paris, not including airfare, we estimated it a little over $2,000. Cool. So it's about $450 a day. What's the biggest expense? A hotel, obviously. A hotel's a big so expense expensive. on that one. Yeah, figure out what's right for you. See our article down below. We do have some hotel recommendations in there. Mm -hmm. And we do a full cost breakdown so you can figure out what your budget is. Maybe you want to do more sites or you want to do, you know, faster hotel, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, we've done a range. They've all been lovely. 
Yeah. No rental car is needed when you visit Paris. That's what's so nice about it. You take the metro to get around, you walk. The city's really known for its walking, right? Because you just walk around these amazing neighborhoods, you look at the architecture, you hop into cafes, you just take your time. What we like to recommend is get lost. You know, you just kind of get lost along the neighborhoods. Yeah. So it's nice, you don't need a rental car, so it's, that's a nice place to save. So aside from taking the metro, if you don't want to spend your entire time underground, we recommend this on London too. Well, we love the tube in London and we love the metro in Paris. Sometimes it's great to take the bus. So it takes longer, yes, but you get to be above ground, you get to sightsee. Um, You're stuck in traffic. You get stuck in traffic. <laughs> you get a little bit more of the like day-to-day -day life vibe too, okay. I feel like. What bus do you recommend? Bus number 69, because that will take you right through the heart of central Paris, past a bunch of different sites. It starts at the Eiffel Tower. You'll get to go even down to the Louvre and beyond. It goes through the Marais. Yeah, so there's, yeah. there's a lot there. Bus 69, bus check 69. that out. And then Paris has also invested heavily in its bike paths. Mm -hmm. So another great thing to do is go biking around the city. We sent your parents on a biking tour like 20 years ago. Oh, we did, 20 yeah. years ago, 15 yeah, years ago. Really cool. A bike tour, and they still talk about it. There you go. Best experience. Know when to visit. All right, so first of all, go and you can. Paris is nice at all seasons, sure but they definitely have seasons. Mm -hmm. The best time, in our opinion, is September and October. As in most places in the world, you get nice brisk weather and leaves changing color, plus no crowds. Also, May is a lovely month to visit too. Yeah. It's kind of like the shoulder seasons. May is wonderful. Even June is great. We went in June last year and it was fantastic. It was really nice. Yeah. yeah. The time when you might want to mm, just go with a little bit more caution is July and August, and that's because it's crowded. Not just because of the Olympics, it's just the peak just season in general. general. Mm -hmm. It's crowded, it's hot. Paris gets heat waves, and if you're staying in like an Airbnb or a much more budget hotel, you, you might not have air conditioning. There you go. And in August, things are closed, so mm -hmm. you might find yourself really disappointed. Yeah, a lot of Parisians leave the city in August mm -hmm. for holiday. So apparently there are like nine of these that do sparkling water in the city. If you know where those are located, you let us know. <laughs> How long should you spend in Paris? As we mentioned above, a lot of people recommend five days. As we were coming from London, we perfected the three night trip. So we had a really good time. We have a video up above on 48 hours in Paris, nice two day itinerary. But if you really want to do sightseeing, if you love big cities and you just want to meander, walk around, do seven, 10 days. Especially if you want to do day trips. Too. Exactly. You can go to Giverny to see where Monet lived and see where his water lily painting was. You can go out to Versailles for the day. I mean, there's a lot of great day trips that you go out from Paris to explore. Where to say, a big one, right? You gotta book this probably first for your trip to Paris. Mm -hmm. Let's talk geography. The city is dissected by the Seine River. The right bank is to the north and the left bank is to the south. The ancient heart of the city is the island where Notre Dame is sitting on. And that's Ile de la Cité. What I found really confusing, and you will not, we are now that you're watching this, is that the city is broken down into 20 different arrondissements. So those are like neighborhoods. And so the very first one starts in the center of Paris, near the Louvre Museum, on the right bank. And then the districts winds clockwise direction around the city center, covering both the left and the right. Thanks. It's kind of like a Nautilus shell. Mm. Very different from how London does it with their boroughs. Yeah. So where to stay, what neighborhood is the best for you, right? We have six tips on where to stay, starting off in what neighborhood or on to see Mont is best for you. So number one is, we like to stay in the center of Paris. Mm -hmm. We like one through nine. Those are kind of like the heart of the city. A lot of people don't love it because they say it's touristy and expensive and the buildings are smaller, the places are small. And that's true. But all true. But we just like it because it's easy to get around, especially if you're on limited time. It's nice to be in the heart of it. If you want more of a local neighborhood feel, stay in the outer ones yeah. if you want, but don't stay too far out. And that's tip number two is staying outside the city might not be worth it depending on how much time you have. So that was my first mistake when I stayed in Paris. I didn't actually stay in Paris. I stayed on the outskirts of Paris, and I took the RER train in, which is the commuter train. It's just different. <laughs> That's what all I'll say, is you need to make the decision based on your budget and what you like. You may not want to spend all your time in the morning and the night on this commuter train yeah, with other, it, you know, Paris workers going home. And, you know, you want to sometimes pop back to your hotel for a break before you go to dinner and whatnot, and I wasn't able to do that. Tip number three is just know that hotel rooms are smaller here. And that's really in Europe in general. Hotel rooms are very small, so just go Short with that buildings. expectation. But what I think is really cool is that you can find single rooms. So if you are a solo traveler, which I have been, single rooms are great. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Tip number four is if you choose to not stay in a hotel and you would rather stay in an apartment, a lot of the apartments don't have air conditioning, so just mm. check that out before you book. A lot of hotels now, especially the nicer hotels, like 
four and five star hotels all have air conditioning. Um, some of the more budget hotels might not. So just check it out when you're looking. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Thanks for helping. Mm -hmm. Number six, we get asked this one a lot. If you are traveling with more than just two people, mm -hmm. we have two other people who come along with us often. You are probably going to look at either booking two hotel rooms or trying to find a family room because most of the hotel rooms are double occupancy and this can add up really quickly if you are like a family of four, family of five. So some tips are to look for family rooms at hotels. They are scarce. You have to book early and book ahead um, because there aren't that many of them, but look for those. If you can't find a family room, you can look for hotels that offer a deal on booking a second room. So there are some hotel chains, some boutique hotels that will offer book the first room for full price, get the second room for like 50% off. So look for those and maybe you might be able to save some money. Cool. <laughs> and then if you're really struggling to find hotel rooms to fit your family, you can also look at service departments. Lightning round. Quick FAQs on things to know before you land. Number one is have a good phone plan already set up. You can do an international phone plan through your home carrier in the US, like that goes daily or monthly for international plan. What we like is to get an electronic SIM, an eSIM. We go through Eralo. I don't know if I'm saying that right, it's Simon French, or whatever. But we have a link down below. We love this because because you can download to your phone, it's an electronic SIM, so you, it automatically plugs into like the French network when yep. you're there. And I gotta admit, it's so nice to do this before you land, mm -hmm. because once you land at the airport or the train station, you wanna be able to navigate your way around the city. That's true. So sometimes I don't do this, I'm depending off Erica to, to get us around, that's fine. But, but just be prepared for that. Number two is. Practice your French before you arrive. You don't need to know a lot, but you just need to know enough to be courteous. So some important words that you might want to jot down, make a note of are bonjour, hello. hello. Merci, thank, thank you. you. Bonjour madame, bonjour monsieur, those are good too. <laughs> Au revoir, goodbye. Excusez-moi, excuse me, that's, that's pretty easy. Parlez-vous anglais? So do you speak English? And we oui and no. Yes and no. You can also use Google Translate, download the app to your phone. It makes everything really easy, especially if you need to read signs, take a picture and then you can read what it says. Cash is the Euro. You can have cash on you, but most places do take credit card. A lot of these cities are going cashless. For a power outlet, you will need an adapter like this one right here to get into your electronic devices. You probably don't need a converter like this for the power for the ACDC because most things you have are your, your phones and your computers and stuff like that that run off direct current. Don't overload your itinerary and pack light. We like to have minimal stuff to bring with us. It is nice to bring layers though. The morning can be a lot different from the afternoon for temperature wise mm -hmm. and bring a small backpack. It's just easier to travel with and also to you know put in places compared to a bigger backpack, right? Mm. All right, now you are arriving in Paris and Welcome. here are some things that you should know. Bonjour. <laughs> Getting into Paris, we like to come by train. Mm -hmm. So we love to go from London to Paris, taking the Eurostar. Mm -hmm. That arrives at Gare de Nord station, north side of the station. That's what the station name means. And that's a really convenient way to get in. Yep. If you're flying into Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport is the main airport in the north. There is another airport down on the south, Orly. Charles de Gaulle's most popular. Orly has less flights, but you might find something convenient for you. And it might have more domestic Europe flights, I think, than yeah. Charles de Gaulle. When you arrive at Charles de Gaulle, hopping on the metro is the easiest way to get into the city. There is a bus that goes, but I heard the, the timing isn't great for it. You'll need a separate pass for that. If you do take the metro, you require a special ticket that you can buy there to get into Paris. Taxis are available. They can take a while though with traffic and they're 60, 70 euros. So they'll be your most expensive option. Getting around the city. We love walking around, bringing comfortable pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. So like we said, wander around the neighborhoods. The metro is the most popular way to get around the city. Look for the big M for the station entrances. They're like every few blocks. Get this, the metro is the second busiest subway system in the world. You know what number one is? New York. Moscow. Whoa! I, I didn't think it would be either. I thought it would be London myself. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Metro for kids, three and under ride for free. Four to 11 are heavily discounted. You know, that's really helpful. To buy a Metro ticket, we recommend getting at the kiosk right at the station. Best way to do it. So you can get single paper tickets. They're called the T plus tickets. We end up doing those a lot, to be honest. It's kind of easier, but they are a little more expensive. You can also get a, get a Paris Visite, I believe that's what it's called, which is like a pass. It's unlimited rides for one, two, three, or five days. Oh. So do what's best for you. We have an article down below on more details on that. And I will say, if you do get a paper ticket, don't use it and then ditch it because you do need to show proof 
Oh, when you're on the when you're on the subway. You may need to, yeah. The metro. Mm -hmm. So when you are taking the metro, one thing you do really want to make sure you are aware of is how fast the doors close. Oh yes. Yes, yeah. it will catch you off guard. It's not like London where it's like the doors beep, are going to close. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> In Paris, they roll up, open. And then shut. And yeah, especially you wanna, if, you got, if you got kids, you gotta yeah. make sure you're quick on that one. Get in, get yeah. in, and get your place. Another a great app for navigating the city is City Mapper. That's our go-to app in London. It also works great in Paris and other locations. It'll tell you the fastest way to get from point A to point B, and like what the best mode of transport is. So yeah. you can pick if you want to do a metro, walk, bike, whatever you need, taxi, mm -hmm. Uber, all that good stuff. All right, lightning round on things to know or frequently asked questions when you arrive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please note, these tips apply to pretty much every major city around the world. They're yeah. not unique to Paris. Mm -hmm. Number one is don't eat by major monuments or other tourist sites. Usually the food is going to be more expensive and not the authentic Paris cuisine that you're looking for. Yeah. You don't have to wander far from these monuments to get a good meal, but you do just want to kind of wander off the beaten path. And while you're by these big monuments, just be aware pickpocketers are more prevalent around there. Same on the metro. Like I said, this happens in other cities too. So just always kind of be looking for that. So when you're paying with your credit card, you will be given the option to pay in euros or pay in US dollars. What we have found is choose the pay in euros option because we get a better exchange rate via our card than we do at that terminal. So just a way to save a little money. Experience the city by walking. We can't stress that enough. Check out that architecture. You find all these plaques all over the city. It's just a beautiful city to walk around. So one of our major reasons for it too, especially the parks are absolutely stunning. Luxembourg Gardens is our favorite for that one. The best. Right? Bring those comfortable walking shoes, as we said. Please avoid dawdling. You know, it, Paris is a living city with a lot of people working around, so you don't want to be holding up the sidewalk. It's a common complaint, especially yeah. stopping right at the top of the metro station. I mean, you just block in traffic, right? So just make sure you keep walking. Retail stores are open at 9 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. They're on a pretty strict schedule, allow them close for lunch mm -hmm. also. La Marais, which is our favorite neighborhood in Paris, is pretty much closed on Mondays. Yeah. You won't find anything open there. So plan your day around those kind of schedules. Gratuity, do you tip or not? Same thing goes with London. The tipping culture has changed from no tipping to now tipping is kind of is pretty standard. You'll see it included on most bills. It's around 10%, five, 10% is included. If you're at a cafe and you get a drink, it's usually one to two euros you put down for that. If you're at a good way, it helps the tercy place if the waiter is like demanding more for a tip. Mm. So just kind of know what to expect on tipping. Like I said, 10 to 15% is pretty standard, but check your bills probably included. Toilets are notoriously hard to find around Paris. You're walking around the city and you gotta go, and you go into a cafe and ask where the bathroom is, they'll probably say there is one available. The polite thing to do is order a drink. Sit down, order a drink, and then you can use your toilet. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Usually the toilets are located downstairs or behind the bar. Our last section, thanks for making it this far. Things to do in Paris, some unique things. First one, a quiz. Oh. What is the most visited attraction in all of Paris? It's not what I thought it was gonna be. The Eiffel Tower. Eiffel, that's what I thought. Oh. It is not Notre Dame Cathedral. Oh. I think that's historical. They've been yeah. fixing it up due to the fire. They're expecting to open December 2024. We'll see if they hit their date on that. When we were there during the summer, last summer, it was heavily under construction. Yeah. So I'm sure they're, they're working hard to fix that. Is the Eiffel Tower too? I, I don't know. I forget. What is it? It's a loop. Okay. Is the Eiffel Tower number two? No. It's the loop. Is Eiffel Tower on the list? It's yeah. the Eiffel Tower number it's three. three. It's number three, it's number three, Eiffel Tower. Yeah. <laughs> First thing to do is we love to explore the local markets, especially mm -hmm. you're walking around the city, you go in there for a quick bite to eat or to find some artisanal, you know, shoemaker. I yeah. don't know, <laughs> but we like going to the markets. There's a lot around town. We'll put some up on the map right now for yeah. you. I mean, you're probably going to enjoy the parks in Paris because they are beautiful and we've mentioned it. Our very, very, very favorite one is Luxembourg Gardens. It's just spectacular. If you have kids or if you are a big kid yourself, um, you know, use the boats in the pond there. You can also just sit out in the chairs. There's some famous fountains there. There's uh, a lot of sculptures there. It's a leisure park. So just like grab a chair and relax. It's just wonderful. Another famous one is the Tuileries. It has nice little cafes around it. A lot of artworks right next to the Louvre. It can get pretty dusty and busy, we felt like but the tour is another famous one. Great place for an ice cream. There you go. That's true. Also do a walking tour, choosing a local guy to take you around and show you the sites is a lot of fun. Also you can DIY it. We have a free walking tour down below. It's a one day perfect itinerary. It is like a good amount of walking, but it takes you on a wonderful path to Paris with a lot of great things to do, including lunch and dinner. Oh. Gather on the Seine. The river is gorgeous. It's amazing. It's right in the heart of the city. 
We like to do a boat tour. They're popular and well-priced. They're usually like 16 to 20 euros. Yeah. They take you along all the great sites. They speak in multiple languages and they'll just point out a lot of the great history and sites along the river. It's an easy thing to do. It's only an hour long. It's super touristy and in the best way possible. possible. It really is. great. You can pick up at like Pont Neuf, the old bridge, right by Notre Dame or by the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So like, book, we have links down below to some of our favorites. Number five, I'm sure it's a cliche. It's not super unique, but it's museums. Museums of Paris are wonderful. Even if you don't love museum, you'll love these. They're in beautiful buildings. The architecture is great. Also too, I mean, the, the art collections are staggering. My favorite is the Orsay. It is Musée d'Orsay, it's an impressionist. Mm. So you have Van Gogh there, you have great sculptures, you got Monet, Manet. I'm a chemical engineer, I don't even know much about art, but when you're there, you're like, I know that one, I know that. So it's a lot of fun. And plus you get a classic picture in front of the clock. Oh yeah. Erica's favorite is? Well, I don't know if it's my favorite. It's not her favorite. No. It's not a good <laughs> <laughs> um, And then there's the Louvre, which is magnificent. You can spend days there and get lost there. But here's one tip, it does get crowded and it's busy. So one fun thing is that it is open until 9.45 p.m. on Friday night. Oh, that's a nice date night right there. That is a great night out. So, I mean, you know, head there late afternoon and you can stay until 9.45. What a delight. A tip if you are visiting the Louvre, know that there are four entrances. So the main entrance is the one with the glass pyramid. That is generally the busiest. Go to their website because there are three other entrances. They're usually open, especially during peak times. Two of them you will probably be able to use. One, pretty much everyone can use. Another one you can use if you don't have a large backpack or bag. Um, and then the third one I think is for membership cards only, but you can check on their website and they'll show you if the other entrances are open because those often have significantly shorter queues compared to the one at the main entrance. And while we're on the topic of museums, don't stroll up there just hoping to get in. No. They're booked on time slots and there's huge queues out front for them. So you gotta book this in advance. So Erica has some tips on booking these museums and other things to do around Paris. So technically you can walk up to the museums, but if you want to expedite your entry to a lot of them, make sure you just book a time slot in advance. You'll still probably wait in a queue, but it will be significantly shorter. Um, so yeah, just do that in advance. And here's the big one though, to make a reservation for if you are someone who wants to go up to the summit of the Eiffel Tower, the summit, like the that. summit <laughs> or the second floor, either one. You have to make your reservation in advance. And this is one where if you're hoping to go to the summit, you're gonna wanna set an alarm because tickets are released 60 mm. days in advance yeah. and they sell out fast, especially during like the peak periods. So if you do miss out on getting a ticket from the official website, they're around 30 euros. You can often find them through resellers, but they're going to be significantly more expensive, mm. like a hundred euros oh, wow. per ticket to go up to the top. So just, if you wanna go up the Eiffel Tower, book in advance. I'm gonna set an alarm for our next Please trip. Do. Yeah, yeah, I think it's exactly. gonna be fun. So restaurants, especially for trendy restaurants, you're gonna wanna make reservations in advance and you're gonna wanna show up relatively on time because mm. especially for the ones that are very busy, if you don't show up on time, they will give your reservation away just like anywhere else. And one tip about restaurants is they're not gonna bring your bill until you ask for it. So don't feel like you've been forgotten. You just need to ask for your bill. And I love this because it lets you control the pace of your dinner, right? It does, right? it's more, so you're, it's, yeah, you're in Europe, you're on vacation, it's a, it's a it's quad lovely. or slower life. Yeah. It's lovely. And we have an article or a favorite Latin Quarter restaurants down below in the description, so check those out. And some tips also on, on ordering food and, and making reservations for those. We threw a lot at you with this video. Make sure you go to our website, yourguidesabroad.com, because we have a great free travel guide for Paris with a lot of great things on where to stay and what to do and all that jazz. So make sure to check that out in the description below. Plus our one-page Paris itinerary is down there also. So we have a lot of great stuff. Thanks for sticking with us. And you're gonna have a great first time to Paris, aren't they? Yeah. I bet you will. I bet you will. Have a good feeling. <laughs> Better <Thanks>. than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you.